I had the opportunity to watch a series on Netflix called Ancient Apocalypse, a series that was apparently trending for a time. If anyone is interested in ancient history, it's no doubt an entertaining watch. The series challenges the paradigms of mainstream archaeology and attempts to connect popular oral traditions from around the world, evincing some global pattern. A pattern that leads to the rebuilding of civilization after some cataclysmic event. Due to my obvious interest, I couldn't help but draw historical parallels with African oral tradition, specifically below the Sahara, and notice how there was no mention of these traditions in the documentary. Today, I wanted to add to the discussion. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. Also, your support helps the channel grow, improving production quality and future animated projects. And with a word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. OBT Social is black owned and operated, and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can visit the website at obtsocial.com, links to everything in the description box below. To begin, it's important that you take this video with a grain of salt, because its purpose is more of an intellectual exercise. Most of the information presented will not be in agreement with mainstream historical or archaeological data. The goal is to add the contributions of Africa to a documentary of this caliber. Moreover, I thought it would be fun for the community to learn about similar controversies or old traditions from the continent that parallels with the information presented in the series. If anything, this is a reminder that investment and creation of our own intellectual films and content is of utmost importance. If you intend on watching the film, do not watch this video because there will be spoilers. Let's begin. Graham Hancock is quite the controversial figure. Though his theories are largely viewed in the context of pseudo-history or pseudo-archaeology, he continues to press forward in his attempt to understand the interpretive gaps of history, if you will. Despite the labeling, I think he is to be respected for at least attempting to frame our understanding of ancient historical information. Graham Hancock seems to posit that human civilizations are much older than we give credit. From his perspective, the global stories of cataclysmic events, usually in the form of a great flood, not only points to a common human experience, but insinuates a previous mother civilization. From his analysis, survivors of this mother civilization traveled around the world, reintroducing key components of human knowledge and civilization primarily to hunter-gatherer populations around the globe. And this is where we see, on some level, cultural continuity around most popular ancient civilizations. This continuity being in the form of pyramids across the continents, and the ubiquitous Snake of Destruction iconography of many civilizations. The snake supposedly representing a comet that made impact on the Earth, melting the giant sheets of ice, causing the Great Floods. Now, this was how I understood his documentary. You guys may have had a different understanding, so please add or take away in the comments below. Regardless, the most salient arguments seems to be the idea of very old civilizations before mainstream dates of human agriculture and the connection between great flood myths around the world. During the presentation, I couldn't help but be reminded of two things, the flood myth of the Yoruba peoples and the grievances of some Afro-descended historians concerning the actual age of Egyptian civilization. Graham Hancock did mention the Osiris oral tradition concerning him being a civilizing force in his travels, but I don't recall him questioning the dating of Egyptian civilization, nor did he mention the flood myths from the African continent. I was perhaps wrong-footed in thinking that at the very least, the inclusion of an African flood myth would be present since he spoke on multiple myths from around the world. Anyway, staying true to the context of the film, there are a few scholars who actually question the popular dating of Egyptian civilization, and I would have loved to have seen a brief discussion of it. 
Since he's challenging mainstream archaeology, there would be no greater challenge than to question Egyptian dating conventions. The first time I heard that there were some scholars who questioned the dates of Egyptian civilization was from a British historian named Robin Walker. It really caught me off balance and I was intrigued that there was even a question of it. Here's what he had to say. Just how old is ancient Egypt? A survey of contemporary textbooks on this ancient culture gives a first dynasty date of 3180 to 2900 BC. Dr. FDP Wicker, for example, gives a first dynasty date of 2920 BC and advises his readers that pharaonic dates are generally accepted as plus or minus 75 years at the start of the dynastic period to precision from the 26th dynasty onwards. The confidence that his dates are maximally only 75 years out is totally unjustified, nor should readers be fooled by the apparent unanimity of scholars or their apparent refusal to discuss the problem. This shows little more than the brave face on contrary data. Professors Jackson and Ben Jokinen are to be commended for continually raising this problem in their works. Despite the best efforts of historians and archaeologists over the last 200 years, the Egyptian chronology has yet to be settled in a way that synthesizes the known data. Robin Walker's criticism dates back to around 2006, and since then there may have been improved dating conventions. However, the concern seems to be the teaching of information despite the diversity of opinions from multiple scholars scholars that Robin Walker goes on to mention in the chapter. He challenges the traditional dating of the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx. Whatever the truth is regarding these dating systems, it would have been a great perspective to add in the documentary as Egypt is one of humanity's oldest and recognizable civilizations. Another addition would have been the inclusion of the Yoruba flood tradition. Throughout the film, Graham Hancock points to multiple flood myths around the globe painting a picture of a universal human narrative. Africa is by far one of the largest continents on the planet, addressing the flood myths from around the globe, yet excluding entire people groups from the continent is a bit bizarre. Because if we are to genuinely believe in the probability of his arguments, there is no way we can ignore the traditions of such an enormous continent. What better way to demonstrate your point of a global experience than to include Africa? it would clearly be a reinforcement of the argument. Excluding Africa doesn't do much to buttress this alternative perspective. Anyway, it's interesting to note the Abrahamic disposition of many Afro-descended people and their familiarity with Noah's flood. At the same time, many people of African descent are blissfully unaware that a prominent West African ethnic group shares a similar story of a great flood. The Yoruba tell of a deity named Ifa who became tired of living in the world and accordingly went to dwell in the firmament with Obatala. After his departure, mankind, deprived of his assistance, was unable to properly interpret the desires of the gods, most of whom became in consequence annoyed. Olokun was the most angry, and in a fit of rage, he destroyed nearly all the inhabitants of the world in a great flood. This is eerily similar to the story of the Abrahamic tradition of Noah and God's hydraulic judgment towards humanity. Eleife, also called Oyi Lagbo, the place of those who survived, may be strange to students of the Bible because of its similarity with the story of Noah and the Ark. The missionaries were stunned on arrival to Nigeria to find that the indigenous people had stories of creation comparable to the story of the creation of the universe and the flood in the book of Genesis. Now, depending on the source, you may get slightly different versions of the Yoruba flood account. Nonetheless, the account exists. This is one of the reasons why knowledge of African history is so important for the diaspora because we're able to draw these parallels and be reminded of our ancestral agency in discussions like these, however unmeasurable they may be. Moreover, we'll be able to relate these perspectives to the next generation so that they understand their place in the greater historical narrative. Despite the controversy of Graham Hancock's interpretations, at the very least, the documentary is entertaining and a critical exercise challenging our most precious academic proclivities.
Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.